Hello, I'm Manuela. Welcome to my channel. It's dedicated towards creating narcissistic abuse awareness and more so from a biblical standpoint. And I'll also be discussing general life issues. Well, I've been looking at a number of uh, different terminologies that you're going to find in the, in the narcissistic corridors and I'm still on to them. Time and again, I'll interject with other subjects. Today's terminology is projection. Projection is an unconscious defense mechanism where one attributes their, ne their negative traits, uh, feelings, shame, and insecurities onto others such that they feel better while taking the positive qualities of the other person and attributing themselves. This unhealed trauma is always traced back in childhood. It is, I would say, a developmental milestone, however children outgrow it. Unfortunately for the narcissists, these people are arrested developmentally, so they do not outgrow it. As long as it is going to malign their grandiosity, they will not align with it. It is their nature. Regardless of how far they will go in life, whether they are sexagenarians, whether they are octogenarians, whichever stage of their lives, they will always project. They cannot change it. It comes with the territory of being a narcissist. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 from the King James Version talks of how a man thinketh, so is he. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A stupid man will always try to malign another person with that trait of theirs. When you hear critically what these people are saying, these people are actually telling you who they are. So when they project, it is coming from their heart. This character flow in them, is, it's basically there to character assassinate another person. You are left confused angry mad you can't believe someone can do that they accuse you of things that you never expected you never believed you even don't know like where did it come from you these people are so convincing they will look you in the eye without batting an eyelid and they will call you exactly what they are you have seen them do something and instead they will attach it onto you and you're like nope and they're like yes this devious manipulative tactic is only carried out onto people whose qualities they admire each time a narcissist or a toxic person is uh, projecting onto you just know that you have good qualities keep that in mind they can never attack someone who has got bad qualities all because they are envious of you they desire your qualities but they cannot have them narcissists will do this to whoever is in their proxy children their partners their parents, they'll call you things like you're lazy, you're stupid, you're ugly, you are nothing, you are wasted effort. When someone is projecting, it basically means someone cannot introspect, lack self-awareness. So they cannot even tell that they are projecting. Their self-worth is based on how others view them. You'll question your own sanity as you take on these insecurities that are being attached to you the humiliation the shame the anger the, you know you go through a whole lot of negative emotions in there if you get to understand narcissism you are going to be on top of the game because projection actually gets to get to help you get into the heart of the narcissist because every false accusation from a narcissist is a confession whenever you're dealing with a narcissist just remember, if they are accusing you of something, they are the ones doing it. Keep that in mind at all times. They accuse you of stealing. No, he or she is stealing. You don't know how, but they are stealing. When they are throwing all these negative attributes onto you, I encourage you, do not get defensive about it. Master their game. Like I've told you, equip yourself with knowledge about narcissism because by so doing, arming yourself against such dubious tactics of these energy vampires. Every human being does project. You yourself, the, the empath, the codependent, with your positive qualities, 
you also project because your nature dictates every, every human being has good in them so you as an empath you're going to project kindness compassion love joy peace you you are projecting all these positive qualities that the narcissist loves and it is now very difficult for you to see them for who they are and that is what that is why you find that many times you also get caught up in this way that you keep entangling yourself in because of that that hope that belief there must be something good in them. Your godly attributes have now been armed against you at this point. The narcissist literally can never grow to maturity. Reason being they were arrested at the ego stage. From the E to the ego. Instead of getting into the the super ego, they got arrested at the ego stage. So they cannot have a mature conversation. You may be wondering, but how is it that I can reason with him? Mentally they are able to do that that's why we shall you'll hear so much cognitive empathy it's just that they are cognizant big time you must also up your game in that area be cognizant about every interaction with them these people are out to get your souls they are energy harvesters they will leave you depleted and some people they leave them dead you're going to leave this very open door for abuse to progress as you hope for something positive to come out of them so that's chapter 17 i'll take it to the story of when moses uh, when moses had le led the israelites out of egypt and they've gone through these hurdles no water eventually they get to the to the they are in the desert they they, they don't have food god sends them uh, heavenly bread Maybe they get to this place uh, in the desert, I don't have water, they are complaining, Moses turns to God and God tells him, strike the rock. He struck the rock and water gushes out. He projected God's persona there. Now in the book of Numbers chapter 20, uh, I believe from around 8 there to 12, I've now reached another place and they are grumbling and Moses, is, Moses turns to God and God tells him, get this stick go to go before the rock and speak to it moses goes before the rock with aaron and other people when he gets there he strikes the rock twice at that material moment god actually passes judgment to him and the people of that generation he said they will not reach the promised land moses projected god in a false um, light because this is all a typology of Jesus because the very first strike the smite he, he gave to the rock we saw that as Jesus at the cross God's judgment basically was onto him which was perfect then the second time when God told Moses to speak to the rock Moses strikes the rock twice in other words he was trying to say God's very first sacrifice was not perfect so this is and these are other sacrifices that will be forthcoming Jesus's effort is what and you are spot in heaven Moses projected negative feelings he himself failed yet God wanted people to see his grace the rock can't be struck more than once his sacrifice was once and for all we didn't need an, another sacrifice. Moses misrepresented God. Your continuous projection of your positive qualities towards a toxic person will cost you your health, your peace, and above all, your spiritual growth. So be very cautious when you're dealing with a toxic person. God tells us, be as shrewd as snakes and as gentle as the dove have boundaries when you're dealing with these people Narcissists understand this self-fulfilling prophecy of continuously and intentionally uh, projecting these negative qualities onto you they know over time they're going to start attaching these attributes to yourself as they are leaving you confused these people are intentional in what they are doing that's why the narcissistic personality disorder is branded a personality it is not a mental disorder. We may talk about brain scans, give them credence that they lack empathy. The thing is that they know when to act that way, when there's no one. Then when they're in the public domain, 
their cameras they act different that's what separates them from mentally disabled people they slowly groom you and program you to accept these negative attributes as your your own thereby they start controlling you and you start complying to them you believe their every comment and then you start thinking they are doing you a favor by staying with you who has got all these negative attributes if you defend yourself i, I told you see the way she's acting so erratic and it's like a confirmation of what they were already telling you about you're not stable crazy you have something going on in your head you're not okay upstairs if you're quiet you're thinking through it ah do you see it's a confirmation she has accepted it it's true she's she's not okay upstairs she was quiet because she knew what i'm saying it's true so she can't defend herself in any way it's literally a catch-22 for anyone in this situation as long as you're dealing with the narcissist book of matthew chapter 7 i'll encourage you to read from 1 to 6 talks about judging others the church and the world all over has misconstrued this scripture to the point that you are not allowed to critique someone for their wrongdoing least you shall be judged do not judge god say don't judge that is a subject for another day because that is false god expects us to judge and just look at the scriptures three and uh, three to five let me read this why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye how can you say to your brother let me take the speck out of your eye when all the all the time there is a plank in your own eye you hip, you hypocrite first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye you notice he actually used the word hypocrite and the only time we know he used that word again was when he was talking to the pharisees these are usually people who have a form of godliness but they deny the power they are of I'm talking about the wolves in sheep's clothing. They appear godly, but they do not have the Holy Spirit. This portion I've told you to read. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 6 is talking about narcissists. God is love. These people lack empathy. They do not have the Holy Spirit in them. And the only way to have the Holy Spirit in you is when Christ has gotten into your heart, cleaned it for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in narcissists trying to teach you about who god is when they do not have god in them you repeating what others have talked about from time memorial you'll notice that's why there is no impact because a letter is energy words are energy so if the words are in conformity with your soul heart and mind you are going to experience that energy narcissists are too quick to always point out your wrongdoings call you out they will judge you they are manipulative remember they cannot introspect it means they are limbic and prefrontal lobe are not active so you are going to see this childlikeness in them they cannot regulate themselves the prefrontal lobe is the executive decision without it you cannot make sound decisions that's why you'll always find teenagers have a degree of stupidity in them. That is a no-brainer. The prefrontal lobe develops at age 25 on average. For some people who are having issues here and there, it's, a, it's around age 31. So you can imagine if the narcissist already, they have this uh, issue of living in a survival state of the brain stem only as an adult there's nothing for them to look at rather it is very easy for them to point out your faults while they are having this plank in their eye but they can't see it because they don't they have no knowledge of i'm having this plank here that i need to remove because of their grandiosity for them they refuse to go that direction they have denied it so you must also deny it one may, may say but and we also judge well god tells us to judge righteously why we speak of the fruits of the holy spirit how do we know the fruit of the holy spirit if we don't carry out judgment different ways narcissists are going to project these uh un unflattery traits of theirs onto others one they are going to blame shift remember this out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks 
These people can tell you you're spending too much time with your family and friends. You're ignoring me, especially for the covert. They will pound on you over how you're spending a lot of time with friends and family. Now when you think you're turning down on it and these people talk about it, these people say, I didn't tell her anything. Let's say without this knowledge I'm sharing with you, you're unable to really point out. Yet, narcissists, this covert narcissists i told you that different types i'll talk about them later they do not come outrightly and tell you stop going to see your people stop being with so and so they'll just tell you i do not like so and so you spend a lot of time with so and so those are insinuations at you cutting down on your your communication with them or your presence with them so be very cautious. These people I told you are so insidious. They are devious in their ways. And they act innocent. You're not blaming them for something they didn't do. They did it. So in, so in the end, you actually left in a catch-22 again. People, you can't say there's some resolution. You can't say there's some understanding. They just want to keep you in circles. Confused. Two, they'll accuse you of cheating. This one is so common. When you're dealing with narcissists, I told you another trait about these people. They love stepping out on their partners. They are going to accuse you of cheating. Every false accusation is a confession. If they are not cheating on you, they are about to cheat. They are in the process of doing it or they have already, or they have already cheated. But the end game is that they are going to cheat on you. Be rest assured. It is the nature. Three, they will call you selfish. Let's say this is a, a violent person. One, they call, they are calling you names. They are humiliating you. The moment you put up a boundary, you're like, if you hit me again, I'm leaving. They start calling you selfish. They want you to be okay with the abuse they are taking you through. That's how they interpret you being selfless. For liar, you're less liar. You're like, how? This is the one part these people can't pin you on. They'll continue throwing these accusations. How? Give me an example. And they cannot even bring you one. And they are, they are so adamant. How you say you have, you went to meet a friend of yours. Along the way, you met another friend. So you said hi. So you lied. You went actually to meet so-and-so and then so-and-so. And you're like, but if I went to, to meet A and I happened to have met B before I met A, along the way how was it my problem well you're lying you see i told you are a liar or you're a liar five the thing most people get confused about narcissists are lazy i know you're going to be like what and if they are ceos they are doctors they are... these people can never do anything unless it benefits them they work hard because they know money is their money is going to help me get supply I'll have access to all the women. I'll have access to all the big cars, the big houses. Everything is about me. Supply. But ask them to do day-to-day -day things. They are lazy. These are people who cannot almost lift a finger to help out. But they will critique you about each and everything that you're doing. That they cannot do. So do not be mistaken. You are cleaning up the house, you're cleaning up the kids, you're maintaining the home, you're going to work, you're coming back, attending to them, attending to their family. I mean, you are ever on your feet and guess what? You come back, someone expects you to attend to them. They got home or it was their day off and they haven't done anything to help out. But when you arrive and you're like, let me relax a bit, they will call you lazy. No, you're not lazy. Narcissists are lazy. Six, they are going to accuse you of being wasteful financially. Remember, narcissists are impulsive buyers. You, the other partner, you are following, say, a strict budget. You know finances are tight. But spent just a few monies to pick necessities in the house. And then they are going to accuse you of being wasteful. It could even be the baby's diapers and the wife only come to find out that that night maybe they drank with friends and he literally cleared the bill for everyone in the bar while you were just scratching around to look for money in that place they'll say that you're stealing money how is it when the receipts are there and they're like you're stealing money i know you're stealing money they are stealing money 
You're hiding money, they are hiding money. Just remember that. Even do not cook. You say you're in the family with children, you're having no help. And you're wondering how is it that we are eating? How is it that we have a lot of rubbish? Maybe you're cooking this. Here in Uganda, we have this uh, uh, steamed food in banana leaves. And you're wondering if I'm throwing these things in the dustbin every other day. How is it that I'm not cooking food? Eight, they'll accuse you of things like tribal, being tribalistic or racist. You don't like my people. You don't like my, my, color, my skin color. That, that should be a red flag. They are telling you how they think about you or your people. Nine, they'll insult you. They'll call you names. When you're in show, what, how dare you call me? And then just like that, they flip and you called me stupid. You're done with you at me. You, you see, you're now pretending and you're like, what in the world? Ten, they are slandering someone. They can speak ill of another person. And when you, you know these people to the T, you hear what they are criticizing someone over or maligning them. And it, they are even worse than that person. But the way they speak of this person, you, you feel it in your bones. How is it that they are able to slander someone that way? Yet they themselves are even worse. They are demonic in nature. Eleven. These people are going to play victim when you call them out for something wrong they have done. When you are questioning their behavior, these people are going to turn around, get mad at you and accuse you of being the abuser. People twist and turn issues. You'll be shocked people are sly. It is only the devil who can pull out that. Then they'll start accusing you of smearing them. And in the end, you just drop the issue. Twelve. They'll accuse you of being insane. Let's say you're a young man. You're dysfunctional and your wife starts flirting with another man. When you call her out on it, it can even be in the presence of other people. Winking at each other and you are so embarrassed and humiliated at what they are doing. You call her out about her behavior and she accuses you of being insecure and flirting with other people. And you're like, how? So you are flirting with other people, now you are accusing me. Of it. There's no way of getting to a point of understanding when you're dealing with these people. Some of the ways you can mitigate all this. One, identify you have a problem. Recognize the pattern of falsely accusing you. When someone keeps projecting wrong qualities on words will lie. An action may be questionable, but a pattern tells me who you are. It does not lie. Two, encourage you to to get in touch with your friends and family who you know are objective in nature. Ask them what do they see in you that is positive. Ask them is it true you're, you're having these negative qualities. These people will help you realign you. Three, I encourage you always root yourself in the word of God. Read the word of God. Know who you are. Know who you are in the Lord. Four, do not take this personally. Now the Holy Spirit reminds us you are the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. He wants us to be Christ conscious, not sin conscious. This is always wants you to be sin conscious. Stop projecting your good qualities. Learn to apply your boundaries. Be as shrewd as a snake and as gentle as a dove. Know when to kick butt and know when to sit your butt down respond and not react this is why you just state it without emotion and disengage the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil regardless of how good it is this side that the tree of the knowledge of good there's evil attached to it god does not look at it as good because that is not the tree god wanted man to eat from so even if the narcissist appears kind at certain times, sweet, all that kindness and sweetness is a cover for how abusive they are. They want you to, to always think of those nice times they are, they are throwing in. To keep you running in the, on the treadmill of abuse, they are, do not move the ancient boundary stone. Greatest thing you can be is being you. You are authentic. The narcissist can never be authentic. And that's why they'll always come after you. 
they'll project your qualities because you're authentic. The very God who tells us to love our enemies also tells us to be cautious. Bad company corrupts good morals. People who project negative traits are toxic and avoid them at all costs. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye.